Hey everyone and welcome back. It is Lucid in another game of Dominions 4. We are resuming the Garden of Good and Evil, a multiplayer let's play at turn 32. There's been a lot that's happened, so let's talk about it. We have a message from me announcing that my god has arisen and is awoken. Minions, your bones are held prisoner by your flesh. No longer, for I am here. No longer will you deal with the Dusk Elder Council. They've been rewarded for their service, and will be sent to collect taxes from the living. As long prophesized, I am here and will be forever. So I was telling everybody my pretenders here. Asphodel, uh, I had asked for some kind of boots, like Boots of the Messenger, and he asked if I'd be willing to pay in Death Gems, maybe 12. So the answer is going to be no. I think I can build them on my own now. I, I remember my god has a nature less so I can build them if I'm willing to sacrifice 70 research points. And yep, okay, so a message from Bandarlog. This is a role-playing game, and everybody's supposed to stay in character. Bandarlog has come out of character, and he said, yep, you managed to do the incredible task of picking Airmore and taunting. Shouldn't have joined a game where Airmore is not banned. It's really just not fun. You organize a coalition of all players against Airmore, and they still win. So... It's not even just that Airmore wasn't banned. When I hosted the game, I said I was playing Airmore, and I picked Airmore first. So, everybody who joined, joined knowing they were going to be fighting Airmore, and they all picked counters. Of which, Bandarlog is actually a pretty decent counter. Um, but yeah, Airmore is a strong nation. Uh, overpowered, I would say, by a large degree. I should not be able to win 3v1. Um, but I am, and... Part of it's due to playing the nation correctly, maybe not during the expansion phase, but certainly during the uh, the army phase. I've been pretty good at winning my battles, but I would be frustrated if I were him too, so it's understandable. Um, let's take a look at what happened. We also have a message from Ryla. Ryla says that he thinks I'm trying to make nations fight against him, and that's true, I am. He says, have you forgotten that Set Yig sees all? Where and who you fight, what sights you on, the thrones you have, difficulty claiming, the picture you hide under your bed. So he's talking about the fact that he has this global enchantment up, I have the gods. Um, so dominions can be seen in great detail and so uh, can discovered magic sites, but income cannot be determined exactly. So inside his dominion, he can see more, but even everywhere, he can see sights and thrones. So pretty useful spell. Not going to help him. Actually, let's take a look at it. It'll give us, it's 50 astral pearls. So that's a lot of pearls, um, which means he's going to pretty easily, he cast this a while ago. He probably has a pretty good way to bring down burden of time when it goes up. So I probably want to ca overcast it a fair amount my first time so that hopefully they fail to uh, to, to take it down the first cast but then they'll put a lot of gems into it the second time that's one idea or maybe I overcast by 10 hard to say um, but I'm going to be preparing to cast it twice okay let's take a look at the battles so I tried to take uh, one of Nazca's provinces back with a priest and some ghouls. I, and that was under the assumption, I'm remembering why I did this. I had a priest here, I moved him to attack. I assumed these guys here would try to raid. Particularly they'd try to raid one of my wealthy farmlands rather than sit on a 10 income province. They did not. Um, so instead I just attacked them and they died. Such is the fate of the little ghouls. Uh, Ryla... I caught one of his small armies that he had here. I thought he was going to maybe try to take my throne province from me, figuring maybe I'd be building a fort on it, which I am. Instead, he moved an army here, which looked like a weaker province, but I had booked in a bunch of troops. And this is primarily a mind blast army that he moved. So ghouls will soak up mind blast, so it was not very effective. So you can see he casts a bunch. And also, I have a lot of PD here. So, I don't even really use that many moves. The have no armor or anything, so my guys just shoot through them and then I kill a bunch of their illithids. So if we look at that again, uh, he lost two illithids, I lost 20 ghouls, which isn't great, but hey. Um, 
What else? There was a battle here. I was trying to again expand with priests and ghouls. Ghouls are really weak. Um, so we'll watch this just so you see how weak ghouls are. This, this is why they're much better in forts. Because if these were even decent troops, they would be able to come in and kill them. But you can see they just they really just get slaughtered. Um, so if you have enough of them, they can do something. And I'm using them to expand again, but this is really risky. Um, I'm bringing 100, so I'll probably lose another 20 or 30. Um, really, you want to use them for defense, but I kind of want these provinces back. I think between them, it's probably 70 income, which I could use. Uh, this province I care less about. Nazca's got a huge army here, about 350. Highly likely he attacks. Most of them are human. And Naz can long dead. So highly likely he attacks here. He can't really do like a leap attack. He could move a bunch of mages here, which would be smart. What I'm going to do instead is run away from him. I'm going to move here. I'll move troops here. I potentially am set up next turn. Where I can take all the ghouls here and pull them here if he has a huge army and defend. I'm probably not going to. I probably have to do a mass retreat at this point um, until I bring another good army up north. So I might try to catch Nazca as he expands into here, but I'm going to almost certainly lose these two provinces the next two turns. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take this one back and hold it. Anyway, uh, this area is going to go back and forth. And this is one of the reasons why, when I was doing my site searching, I'm really not trying to site search things far away from my forts, because those are going to be exchanged back and forth uh, for a lot of the game. Like, none of these provinces that have been taken, I've site searched. But all the ones that are really close or inside my fort have all been site searched. Over here, we had a big battle with Bandar Log. Let me give some context. So I had a, a big army here. I took the fort. I took this province. Um, this turn. Or the turn before. And last turn I sent my army that had taken the fort over here. Um, I had lost one army the turn before who had moved from here and attacked. And he got sniped because I didn't have enough ghouls. This army now... Um, well, first we won that battle, so let's take a look. So this is a pretty sizable battle. Bandar Log has a ton of mage support. And... We'll just watch. So they summon water elementals, they cast Howl, and Howl actually is what's gonna kind of mess with me a little bit. Because if you look, guess who's right in the middle of the battlefield? This guy, right? So any wolves that come in from here, from, uh, from the side are gonna be able to kind of come in. Like these wolves you see them right up here, they can come running and attack. And eventually they will, and they'll cause my lictor to run. They're not gonna kill him, fortunately. But that was kind of an oversight of my formation setup. I should definitely have this guy back in here with the wolves. But what you will see is that I'm just going to absolutely chew through before so I kind of skip forward. But you can just see how much damage these li these lictors are soaking up. I mean, they, so they soak up so much damage. And they have one more HP regen than the knights, which really adds up over the course of So, anyway, they're getting wrecked. What you'll see is I get a lot of the mages, but they run. It looks like most of the mages make it off the battlefield, so I'm not totally sure how it says I got as many as I did. But, anyway. Like, you see, they're all gonna run. I don't know why it says they died. But I did kill a fair number of them. So... Because I don't think they're gonna have a big force here, I'm gonna go ahead and send this army. Which, actually, maybe I shouldn't do. The thing is, this is probably a hundred income province, so if I get it, even if I'm just lucky, it's really worth it. But these guys could die. I think maybe I'm... Maybe I chill out. Maybe I patrol one turn. I think that's a safer move. Because what I need is, the next turn I'm going to have my archbishop in the province, and he can pick up all the sacreds, and then I can expand. I do have a scout here, though. Right, let's move this scout out. Um, otherwise, other news, I'm moving an army here uh, to this this province right here. Um, 
So all my troops I'm routing into that fort this turn. I'm bringing over one of my archbishops who was deployed but whose army died. Bringing him in and then I'm going to be giving him all of these troops. So it's probably about 15 knights and about 15 lictors and then a bunch of chaff. So this is not a strong army but it can deal, it will kill with few losses medium armies. And I can potentially come up and kind of reinforce something up here. I, I do need to be really careful. I don't want my H4 dude to die. Um, so I will watch for that. Um, I'm also taking this with a bunch of ghouls. Normally you don't want to use ghouls to fight. Here I've got some better troops out in front, which hopefully take a lot of the damage. Uh, all the arrows and stuff, which would kind of one-hit kill the ghouls. Um, not much to win here. It's a zero-income province. But I'm going to side search next turn uh, with this dude. And I'm also sight searching the throne this turn, so it's a highly likely I find something good here. Um, oh, events. I didn't talk to all the events. I got this event, Dusk Elder, Astral Magic plus one. With this mummy event, right, if you look at it, there was this mummy event that starts with you finding an ancient temple, and then when you put a Dusk Elder on it, you get this. You do not get this event every time. Studying the ancient magic, the seal that, um, the ancient magic that seals the temple crypt you serve and has gained a deeper knowledge of the arts. This you don't get all the time. You, you're really lucky if you get it. It's maybe 25 to 50 percent of the time. Um, and you can get it if you have your Dusk Elder sitting on the ancient temple event. If you get the Divine Mummy, this event goes away and you cannot get it. Usually you want to put an S2 mage on it, uh, and that way when you get the event you go up to S3. Or you want to put an Earth Path on it. And I was pretty particular about who I put on because now it's going to be easy for me to forge a crystal coin. Um, and then when I put boots on him, he can be, um, you know, E2, S2, and then with the crystal coin, he'll be S3, and then he can also do the hat, so he'll be S4. So this gets me pretty far up the astral ladder, and it allows me to get golems, which are a good dependable S2, which. Um, if I get to it, which will probably only be by the late game, it'll be a pretty dependable way to cast um, anti-magic. Uh, but otherwise, there's other useful things I can do with this guy, like build, slave, matrices, and things like that. I could do that without the, uh, the astral bump, but anyway. Um, yeah, so we're taking back a few of the raiding provinces, mostly with ghouls, which I don't like using in combat. But I feel in this case, first of all, they're good versus Mind Blasters, and second of all, it's all I have. So I'd like to get these back. It's probably another 40, 50 income if I take it. Um, so that is the plan. Hoping get that this army moves back, in which case I'll fight him over this province. I don't think he will, but I would slaughter him. Oh, holy crap. Oh, no, I got a lot of ghouls. It's really important when you're fighting Mind Blasters, you bring ghouls. So, I thought for a second I didn't have them, but I do. Um, so, that's this turn. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and uh, I'll catch you all next time. Oh, I sent some messages out, too. So, I sent a message to uh, Asphodel. We've come across requisite gems to forge it on our own. Golgoth, Lord of, the De Lord of Death. And then a message to Bandarlog. Do not despair at the brink of death. It was inevitable. More numbers against death just fuel its fire. The monkeys played tactically well, but the power of death is too strong indeed. Golgoth, Lord of the Dead. Lord of Death. Okay. So, the other thing is I will be able to take this. I need to form forge birch boots, which are a construction 2 item, which Golgoth can do these guys. Uh, they give me mountain survival so I can run up here. Uh, but to do it, um, I need more nature gems. And right now I only have two. Next turn I should have three. With three nature gems, I'll be in a good spot. I can probably turn some pearls into gems. Uh, or I can wait another turn, which I might do. I'm not in a huge hurry to take this throne. It would be nice. We'll see. So, anyway, uh, that's the end of this turn. See you guys next time.